Science, at its core, allows us to question our world and provides a framework to test our assumptions. It's through this scientific process we develop new understanding. There's one property in the ocean that I've been intrigued by for a long time, and that's turbulence. So turbulence is the microscale mixing of the ocean, so it occurs on scales of, say, meters down to millimeters. I first started thinking about turbulence when I started in graduate school. It just seemed like such a cool concept because it was so hard. Turbulence is one of these great unsolved mysteries of, of the universe. I was really intrigued by how turbulence drove planktonic interactions. And I grew up in a time when we thought that the turbulence was driving things like sexual encounters and predation and uh, all these fundamental biological dynamics in the ocean. Twenty years ago, uh, I was working with a colleague developing a new instrument to actually image turbulent motions in the ocean. And we built the instrument, it was really cool, and put it in the ocean and we never saw any turbulence. And the instrument worked perfectly and it turned out that the turbulence was so weak that we couldn't even detect it. The big discovery to me was discovering that this thing that everybody said was really important kind of isn't there. My whole way of thinking about turbulence went from turbulence is really aggressive and mixing organisms to there is no turbulence and the organisms have to be doing all this work. I call it the Jello Ocean Hypothesis because most of the ocean is not actually turbulent. It's not mixing at these really small scales. But it's not like it's a firm jello. It just means that the waters are sliding over each other very gently. There's no turbulent mixing. The structure of the ocean goes from something that's washed out by the turbulence and sort of homogenized to something that's very structured, like a rainforest with all these vines and trees and patches of chemicals and, and other types of things that the organisms experience. That's their environment. They're wandering through this very structured environment instead of wandering through a big homogeneous desert. The sort of jello ocean idea actually makes biology much more important. The swimming, the behaviors, the ability to follow chemical trails become the predominant mode driving interactions between the organisms. We have to start developing instruments that will follow the path of the ocean the way the plankton do. We need instantaneous measurements of what the plankton are experiencing as they live their lives. There's no technologies to do that with right now. And so uh, I think we really need to reconceptualize how we're doing experiments in the lab and how we're sampling in the field so that we can really understand how the plankton experience turbulence.